Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the massive holiday weather emergency and travel chaos. Our team is tracking the blizzard conditions and bitter cold temperatures that are wreaking havoc on Christmas plans. Hundreds of flights already canceled. We have the latest. And the American woman just released from a Russian prison after nearly a year returning to the U.S. on the same day as Brittany Griner, sharing her harrowing story of abuse in her first national TV interview. Those stories and much more coming up right here on GMA. Well, ahead in the next hour, GMSA asking for more money at work can be a daunting task. Coming up, we'll show you the do's and don'ts when it comes to asking your boss for a raise in the new year. But our big story this morning, and it's been like this almost all night long, a major road closure does continue. Avoid 410 South over by Ingram and Marbach. If you can exit the highway well before Highway 90, the, remain, the road remains closed in that area again southbound 410 at highway 90 look at the huge backup of traffic ahead this hour a family on the city's north side loses their home and some of their pets after an overnight fire we'll take a look at the damage a bold and historic trip to Washington for Ukraine's President Zelensky. I'm ABC's Justin Finch with what he's asking of Congress and the new defense package the White House just authorized. Brutally cold temperatures are still headed our way and local shelters are doing what they can to help people with no place to get out of that kind of weather. But they need your help. We'll tell you what their biggest needs are right now. And then look outside with live cam 47 degrees outside. Lots of people are going to be heading out this holiday weekend. We have your full forecast in just a little bit. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Thursday. It is December 22nd. Good to have Tiffany Huertas here this morning. I'm excited. Buenos dias. Get your cafecito ready. Have everything hot chocolate to go. You, where do you see some of these temperatures up in the Texas Panhandle right now? Justin is in for Mike and uh, we have more on that. And we're also tracking a huge, huge incident that's got 410 South closed over on the west side. Mm -hmm. Busy on the roads, but at the cold front really is the big story. I mean, man, these uh, these numbers are just incredible. Uh, we're seeing wind chill values drop to uh, negative 30, negative 40 in some cases, uh, negative 60s, you get up into Wyoming, that is the wind chill right now, negative 61. The temperature is negative 38. And as we look down towards Texas, Amarillo right now, negative one, wind chill negative 28. Nine in Lubbock, negative 12, the feels like number. So this air, this cold air, it means business and it is scheduled to arrive in San Antonio, we think just after lunch. So around one o'clock today is when you'll start to feel the effects of this front. In the meantime, we're at 48. So it's chilly out there, but nothing like it's going to be later tonight and into tomorrow. So your KSAT 12 hourly forecast, 50 at nine o'clock, cloudy, mostly cloudy at noon. Then the front comes through, clears things out. Temperatures drop like a rock. 45 degrees at three o'clock. We're down to 39 at four o'clock, 32 freezing by 5 p.m. Northeasterly winds anywhere from 20 to 30 miles per hour, gusts up to 40, and that will make it feel all that much colder. Wind advisory in effect, noon to midnight gusts to 45, as we said. Wind chill warning begins at 6 p.m. Wind chills can be in the single digits, and then a hard freeze warning lows in the teens Friday and Saturday mornings. So those are the advisories and warnings we have in place right now. Make those preps now. You only have a few hours left before that front gets here. Um, right now, 48 degrees, as we said, at the airport southwest. Julie winds about five miles per hour. And we're going to switch gears now and talk traffic. We'll go over to Transguy now, and you can see uh, the, the stack up that we have here at Highway 90, uh, 410 at Highway 90. Uh, there's been an incident there and the road is completely blocked off. This is southbound 410 and you can see it is basically at a standstill. This is not a good situation. You'll want to avoid it if you can because that is going to cause some major headaches this morning. We continue to see this stack up. If we can, we'll go back over to the maps and I'll show you where this issue is at this hour. And again, as I said, it's around the 410 uh, 90 area where uh, we have the problem. And it probably will last a while longer uh, throughout the morning. And it's uh, again right there on the city's west side where that backup and it will continue to stack up there along 410. We'll keep you posted up throughout the rest of the morning. We've also got some updates on this front. The latest here in just a little bit. Mark. 
Justin, thank you for updates on both. New this morning, cleanup underway after an overnight fire on the north side at a home. It happened a little after 1130 last night on Briarcrest, not far from Bulverde and Wetmore Roads. Crew said the family was not home at the time. They say the flames were sparked by a heating lamp that was used for the family's chickens in their backyard. The chickens were killed. A dog and cat got out of the house. The home is considered a total loss. The brutal cold weather is almost here, and for those who don't have a warm place to call home, local shelters are trying to make room. Offices and conference rooms at Haven for Hope will soon become warm shelters for freezing temperatures. Shelter staff will be making the rounds looking for people in encampments who need a warm place to stay. Nearby at the Salvation Army, the shelter is at capacity, but there's plenty of goodwill and desire to help. All local shelters that help the homeless say they could use some help. So our biggest need right now is winter coats um, for men and women. They can be new or gently used. If they have a, a new blanket or if they're able to provide a, a warm blanket for someone to please uh, bring it here to area command and they can bring it to 521 West Elmira Street. This is just the beginning of the long winter ahead. Shelter staff says once the holidays are over, they see a significant decrease in the number of volunteers. So anytime you can help, they would appreciate it. Right now, 605 turning now to Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky's historic visit to Washington, D.C. Zelensky is now the first wartime leader in generations to address our Congress. ABC's Justin Finch has more from Washington. Following in the footsteps of British Prime Minister Winston Churchill, Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky addressing Congress and seeking to cement a wartime alliance. Our two nations are allies in this battle. Zelensky framing Ukraine's fight against Russia as one for the future of common freedom and shared values. The president thanking the U.S. for its continued support and calling on Congress not to waver. Your money is not charity is an investment in the global security and democracy that we handle in the most responsible way. Congress now mulling over a $1.7 trillion government spending bill, which allocates $45 billion in additional aid for Ukraine. We understand in our bones that Ukraine's fight is part of something much bigger. Just before Zelensky's arrival, the White House approved another military aid package, including an advanced surface-to-air Patriot missile system. We need to be working with the Ukrainians to give them the ability to go on the offensive, because you cannot win a war on the defensive. Patriot missile system, very important. But some military experts say it may not be helpful against drones that Russia has been using to cripple Ukraine's electric grid. In Congress, Zelensky's remarks were warmly received. There aren't many moments like this. Uh, I think everyone in the room understood the sense of history involved. And Russia warning the U.S. supplying Ukraine with that Patriot missile system would be seen as a provocative step. But President Biden pushing ahead, saying the move isn't escalatory, but defensive. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. In your morning consumer headlines, consumer confidence hit an eight month high in December, but persistent recession fears are leading fewer households to plan big ticket purchases over the next six months. Experts say more Americans are taking vacations through June of 2023. This is their expectations of more inflation fell to the lowest level since September 2021, mostly reflecting lower gas prices. It's the season of giving and Amazon customers can again give a $5 tip compliments of the company to drivers who made their most recent delivery. The popular Alexa Thank My Driver program was so successful when it launched earlier this month that Amazon had to shut it down after just one day. The company says this time will continue the campaign through the first million customer thank yous. A new warning about a shopping scam. Authorities say thieves are out to take advantage of last minute holiday buyers with bogus deals. Shoppers are being cautioned against emails with fake surveys and deals on designer products. The FCC has proposed a $300 million fine against the robocall campaign that was pushing extended car warranties. It would be the agency's largest fine ever. The FCC says the scheme is run by two California men who racked up 5 billion calls in just three months. Netflix will start streaming Nike training club classes just in time for New Year's resolutions. The streaming service releasing 
uh, 30 hours of exercise sessions, including strength training and yoga led by Nike trainers. And happening today, an HEB tradition hits a milestone as it hosts its 30th annual Feast of Sharing. The annual community event is expected to feed more than 10,000 people at the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center. Doors open at 11 a.m. The event ends at 3 in the afternoon. The convention center will be filled with food, music, activities for the family and Santa. Hundreds of volunteers are ready to serve. VIA is offering free rides to and from the feast. The feast of sharing is free and open to the public. HEB has been hosting this event since 1989. 609, 47 degrees. Much more to come on GMSA, including the nightmare people at airports and on the roadways could be in for as the severe weather makes its way across parts of the U.S. That's coming up a little later. And just ahead, why there are renewed calls for Congressman-elect George Santos of New York to resign. And outside with live cam, 47 degrees. Traffic in this area is, is running smoothly, but we know on southbound Loop 410 at Marbach, Please avoid that area. Justin has your forecast coming up. Calls for a newly elected congressman to resign are growing louder this morning amid new claims that he made up stories about his past. And now what he said about his family is also coming into question. ABC's Andrew Dimbert explains. Congressman-elect George Santos of New York, whose election last month helped Republicans narrowly take control of the House, is facing new allegations of fabricating his life story. The latest claim coming into question, that his grandparents survived the Holocaust. My grandparents survived the Holocaust, so these regimes of socialism, Marxism, they don't work. Santos told voters his grandfather fled to Brazil after escaping the Nazis in Eastern Europe. Fleeing Stalin's persecution, going to, to Belgium, finding refuge there, marrying my grandmother, then fleeing Hitler, going to, to, to Brazil. That's a story of, of, of perseverance. But according to The Forward, an independent Jewish news organization, genealogy websites show both Santos's grandparents were born in Brazil. The gaping hole in Santos's resume now appearing to grow wider after first being exposed Monday by The New York Times. Santos has said he attended NYU and Baruch College, but the schools say they have no records of him. Santos has said he worked at Goldman Sachs and Citigroup, but the banks say they have no record of him. Even his animal charity has no IRS paper trail. If you've seen Inventing Anna on Netflix, this is Inventing George Santos. And it's time that he do the right thing and step aside. Santos has still not come forward to respond. His attorney only issuing a statement suggesting the accusations are a political hit job. His opponents say otherwise. See, it appears to be a complete and utter fraud. His whole life story made up. And he's going to have to answer that question. Did you perpetrate a fraud on the voters of the 3rd Congressional District in New York? Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Well, we hope you got the word about traffic. Southbound 410 remains closed at Highway 90 over on the west side. Avoid the area at all, if at all costs, uh, because it's been like this for hours now. Also, Tiffany, I'm seeing right now on the TxDOT site, there's debris in the road, 281 northbound at Jones Maltzberger, not too far from Alamo Quarry Market. And we know that traffic is going to pick up. A lot of people are still traveling here into town and going to work. So please avoid these areas. Yeah, it is still a work day, although people may look at the forecast and think, mm, maybe I'll just stay at home today. Is work from home an option? Yeah, <laughs> it could be for some, especially this afternoon, the way things are looking. It's going to get awful cold. Uh, as we start with the travel forecast, as uh, people are hitting the roads and headed, heading out of town, or maybe you're catching a flight today, here's where the big travel impacts will be. We think the Midwest, Great Lakes, there's going to be some moderate to major issues places like chicago is going to be dealing with bitter cold and potential for snow that all moves across the northeast tomorrow and then probably gets a little bit better as we get into the weekend places like detroit will still have some issues but in general i think uh, travel hopefully gets a little bit better but as we look at the big picture today through saturday it's the northern tier states where there will be issues as far as wintry weather goes we'll all be dealing with the cold and as I said, that cold is set to invade South Texas just after lunch today. 48 degrees right now. We've got a dew point of 43. We have been watching for some fog, but that really has not been an issue. Southwesterly winds at five miles per hour. The temperatures to our north, 
just uh, pretty incredible. We've been updating this map as often as we can throughout the morning, but it feels like negative 61 right now in Casper. The temperature negative 38, negative 13 in Denver feels like negative 29. It is negative one in Amarillo. Feels like negative 28. You don't see numbers like this all too often. So we know that this is just a bitter cold air and it is spilling quickly. It's so dense. It's spilling south as it heads towards our neck of the woods. It is on the doorstep of Abilene. Dallas Fort Worth will be next. Midland and that cold air will make it there by about 9 a.m. this morning, we think, and then into the hill country by 1 p.m. on our doorstep here in San Antonio. We may briefly get up to about 60 or so. Doesn't last very long. Once the front moves through, we're going to see at least a 10 degree temperature drop off almost instantaneously. And then from there, temperatures really start to plummet. Five o'clock, we're down to freezing. 28 Kerrville, 25 Fredericksburg. And then by tonight, 10 p.m., 25 here in town. We're already moving into the 20s. There's already teens on the map. And on top of all that, it's going to be gusty. Winds are going to be strong this entire time, so it's going to feel so much colder. Uh, 18 by tomorrow morning to start. So that's that hard freeze. And we haven't had a freeze in San Antonio, at least not at the airport yet. We're going to go from not having a freeze all the way down to 18. So make sure you have the preparations in place especially those uh, sensitive plants. Obviously, we've been talking about the four P's, pets, pipes, uh, people, plants. You want to take care of all that. You have a few hours left to do so. And the gusty winds gusting to 40, 45 miles per hour as we go into tonight. So keep in mind uh, also, if you're wrapping some of those plants, you got to tie it down really good because that stuff's just going to blow away. Same for the Christmas decorations. So there's a lot to uh, a lot to keep tabs on as this front moves through. Look at these wind chills tonight. This is five o'clock. It's going to feel like 18, feel like 14 by 7 p.m. It'll feel like it's in the single digits as early as 10 p.m. tonight with those gusts uh, really howling through tomorrow morning. The winds do subside by Friday midday. And as we look at the Christmas weekend forecast, it's all good. Cold start, but 40 Christmas Eve, 49 Sunday. As I said, Santa will feel right at home uh, with that 22 degree start. It's kind of like the North Pole here in South Texas. <laughs> He's got a good wave. He really does. Uh, 35 tomorrow. We showed you the weekend forecast, 58 Monday. It does warm up next week. Uh, we'll get out of this cold stuff, but there's going to be several nights here where we're uh, very, very cold. 18 both Friday morning, Saturday morning, and Sunday morning. We're down to 22. Also want to let you know that today we will be having a live broadcast as the front comes through. You can uh, scan the QR code there. You can join us on your phone. You'll be able to join us online. And the meteorologist, uh, it'll, it'll be a meteorologist, Mia Montgomery and Adam Kasky, and they'll be giving you the latest on this front as it moves through minute by minute coverage. Because again, this is, this is significant. This is not your regular old cold front. And remember those pets because this is very dangerous for many. Yeah, I mean, when it's that cold, uh, th this is a whole new level. So yeah, you, just, you definitely want to bring them in. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Justin. Yeah. 620, about 47 degrees. Coming up after this break, residents of a small village in Alaska teamed up to help a baby who needed an emergency flight to a hospital. That story is just ahead in your GMA First Look. As we head to break, we want to share how some of us here at KSAT enjoy the holiday season. My name is Emily Allen. I am the Night Beat executive producer, and my family's Christmas tradition is to have Chinese food on Christmas Day. And no, it has nothing to do with a Christmas story, although everyone thinks that's what it is. It actually started when I was in high school. Our house flooded on Christmas Day. We couldn't make Christmas dinner, so we just said, we'll just go out, have Chinese. That's what's open. So we do that every year. It doesn't matter where we are. Um, we've done it at Disney World, we've done it when I lived on the Gulf Coast, and this year we are going to be having Chinese food in Las Vegas. Merry Christmas, San Antonio. For skin as alive as you are, don't settle for silver. Harness the power of seven moisturizers and three vitamins to smooth, heal, and moisturize your dry skin. Gold Bond, champion your skin. You pour your heart into everything you do, which is a lot. So take care of that heart with Lipton, because sipping on unsweetened Lipton can help support a healthy heart. Lipton, stop chugging, start sipping. Peaceful state, full plate. Wait, are you my blind date? Dancing crew, a trip for two. Now the final interview. 
Buy or lease. Masterpiece. Inside joke. Artichoke. Game with Doug. Brand new mug. Come here, kid. Give me a hug. Have you gotten your updated COVID-19 booster? They're designed to help protect against recent Omicron variants. Schedule yours at vaccines.gov. In this morning's GMA First Look, a holiday miracle 35 miles from the Arctic Circle. Calvin Moto, the only maintenance operator for the tiny town of Deering, Alaska's airport, got an urgent call from his local health clinic. An infant needed to be emergency medevac to a hospital, but the lights on the airport's two runways were out of service, making it impossible for planes to take off or land in the dark. If anything were to be done, we were going to have to all get together and do this. So together, Moto and other locals hatched a plan. Plan. The community of 150 people gathering nearly 30 ATVs, cars, and snowmobiles, positioning each one where a runway light would be, allowing the rescue plane to touch down and pick up the little one. It was just unreal seeing that the pilot trusted us to help him land. And we'll have much more on this village of holiday heroes coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrea Fujii, ABC News, New York. 625, 47 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, we're staying on top of an overnight fire that completely destroyed a Northside home. What else the family lost just ahead? And we have a big traffic alert. We're now being told that Loop 410 is closed in both directions at Highway 90 on San Antonio's west side due to an incident. You're watching GMSA. More to come. You took two innocent lives. They didn't even get to be grown. They're not grown-ups. You just left them. Instead of making holiday plans, two families are mourning the loss of their children. Why the family's asking for help just ahead. We've been getting ready for it all week, but is CPS Energy ready for it? Coming up, we'll tell you how they've been preparing for the coming winter blast. And some big, big news for some former Spurs and current Spurs coach, Greg Popovich will explain. Our big news this morning is actually on the roads right now over on the west side where Loop 410 is now completely shut down at Highway 90 due to an incident. Traffic has been backing up for hours. It remains that way here as we approach 630. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. It is Thursday, December 22nd. Thanks for starting your day with us. Tiffany, glad you're with us this morning. Very exciting. All eyes on the roads and the skies. Everything is happening today. That's mm -hmm. right. And Justin's here, and he's been tracking temperatures all morning so far yeah. with that blast that has already entered the Lone Star State. Pretty incredible. 47 is going to seem like a warm day. That's where we are right now. That's going to seem warm compared to what we're expecting later tonight. And I was looking at some of the numbers. I was doing some math here on my sheet. Uh, Amarillo was at 41 at midnight and by 6 a.m. this morning they were down to negative two that is a 43 degree temperature drop over six hours then in Lubbock they were 36 at 3 a.m. they're now down to nine so just to give you some uh, perspective on just how cold this air is uh, we've been showing you these just incredible wind chills Casper Wyoming is negative 61 that's the feels like number and right now Lubbock the wind chill there has now dropped to negative 12. It is negative 28. The feels like number in Amarillo with a air temperature of negative one. This front means business and it will be here. It's dense air, so it's moving pretty quickly. It'll be here by just after lunch. We're sitting at 48 right now in the, the case that 12 hour forecast by 10 o'clock. We're at 53. And by lunchtime, we could be in the 60s, but it only lasts for maybe an hour because once that front comes through, these temperatures will fall off a cliff. 39 degrees by 4 p.m., 32 at 5 o'clock. So we're already down to freezing by dinner time, and we've got those strong northeasterly winds, anywhere from 20 to 30 miles per hour, gusts up to 40. Weather headlines. Wind advisory is going to be in place noon to midnight, gusts up to 45 miles per hour. We have a wind chill warning that begins at 6 p.m. Wind chills will be in the single digits by that point. And then we have a hard freeze warning, lows in the teens Friday and Saturday morning and in the 20s by Christmas morning. So a stretch here of very cold weather, no precip, no ice, no snow for us. It's just the cold stuff. And if you haven't made any of those preps yet that we've been talking about the last couple of days, you still have a few hours to do so before that front gets here. And we'll have live coverage of the front coming through all day long and more updates throughout the day, guys. Oh, first, we got to talk traffic very quickly. Uh, and there is the scene that Mark 
was just talking about there. 410 and Marbach 410 closed southbound and northbound. And so this is causing huge uh, delays you want to avoid if at all possible. Everyone's being forced to exit and get onto the service road. And as you can imagine, even though there's not a ton of traffic this morning because we are sort of in a holiday week, this is still going to cause uh, potentially huge, huge backups for your morning commute. So just heads up there. We'll keep tabs on that as well, guys. Southbound had been closed for hours. They just out added the northbound side. So we'll try to keep you updated throughout uh, the rest of GMSA and during Good Morning America. Well, a plan to keep some pets warm has gone wrong for the owner of a northeast side home. It started a fire overnight that spread throughout the home. Katrina Weber is live in the 4000 block of Briarcrest near Bulverde Road. Good morning, Katrina. Was anyone hurt? Good morning. Uh, firefighters tell us no one was home at the time, but there were some pets uh, involved in this, and it appears, appears that they were not as lucky uh, to make it out alive. The house also took a big hit. Uh, it's kind of difficult to see it in the dark, but the uh, roof, part of the roof is gone. I can give you a better look at the video that we have from about 1130 last night. That's when the fire broke out. Firefighters told us that uh, there were some heating lamps that were being used to keep chickens warm. That started a fire which spread to the back of the house and then raced throughout the house. The firefighters tell us that those chickens, it appears, did perish in the fire. They did die in the fire. They also uh, were missing a cat from the home, although a dog did make it out safely. But again, no one home when this fire broke out, so no uh, human injuries or lives lost, but a lot of damage to this home here uh, in the 4,000 block of Briarcrest. Reporting live on the northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Another overnight fire in the north side briefly had a family trapped outside. Happened just after 1 a.m. on Lee Hall Street near I-10. Crews say the family was stuck in the backyard when the overhang on their front porch caught fire. Firefighters were able to quickly get it out once they got there. No one was hurt right now. It's unclear what sparked the flames. Instead of sharing Christmas with their teenage boys, two families are now making funeral arrangements after a deadly hit and run crash. They're asking for help to find the driver responsible. 15 year old Jordan Canedo and 17 year old James Solis were hit and killed on the 2700 block of Rigsby Avenue nearly a week ago on their way back from Christmas shopping. Their families are now relying on each other as they seek justice. Police say they have no suspects or witnesses in the case at this time. If you know any Anything that can help, you're asked to call SAPD. Just about 635 now to the approaching bitterly cold weather. CPS Energy says it will be ready for the drop in temperatures. Part of its response plan includes bringing all of its power sources online before the colder air moves in. CPS Energy says it's winterized its plant since the big freeze of 2021. And while precipitation not expected to be an issue, high winds will definitely be a concern. A spokeswoman says its teams are already on standby. You can report downed power lines. And here is the number. Jot this down. It is 210-353-4357. Again, just to report down power lines. CPS Energy also says they're going to hold off on any disconnections over the holiday weekend. San Antonio Water System also saying now is the time to protect your pipes and faucets. The temperature expected to dip this afternoon. Saws is telling everyone to wrap their pipes. You can use foam insulation and faucet protectors. If you can't get these particular items, Saul says wrapping pipes with rags or newspaper will help. Saws also has YouTube tutorials on how to turn your water off at the meter in case your pipes freeze. Flights around the country are already being canceled or delayed due to the bad weather. Here in San Antonio, passengers are being asked to check their flights definitely before heading to the airport. As of this morning, most flights are on time so far. Airport officials suggest arriving at least two hours before your boarding time. Remember to print or download boarding passes early and be prepared for those delays or interruptions. You can monitor flight updates on the airport's social media site and on their website. VIA is also keeping eye on the temperatures. All VIA services will operate as usual as long as the weather cooperates. If that changes, VIA will announce it online. Beginning today, anyone traveling to or from a warming center can ride for free. But you have to tell the bus operator or the VIA Trans Reservation agent that's where you're going or leaving. If you have any questions or need more information, call 210-362-2020.
We aren't the only ones who are about to experience brutally cold temperatures. As we mentioned just moments ago, tons of Americans are getting ready to go to airports as the big storm approaches. And freezing rain in parts of the Midwest and Northeast could make roadways an absolute nightmare. ABC's Andrea Fujii has more. This is an absolute whiteout. The National Weather Service calls it a once in a generation storm, and it's already crippling Christmas travel. More than 200 miles of Interstate 90 in South Dakota is closed. And in Chicago, people are being warned to avoid the roads altogether. It's not fun to drive in the snow. I bet not. I mean, in the blizzard, the worst. Blizzard conditions, ice, and flooding are expected from the plains and the Midwest to the East Coast. Temperatures are plunging, dropping 32 degrees in just nine minutes in the Rockies. The life-threatening cold will soon reach as far south as Texas. One in Dallas, minus 26 in St. Louis for a for a uh, wind chill. And come Saturday morning, Christmas Eve morning, those numbers will be spreading over towards the East Coast. So nearly the entire country well below zero for wind chills. Airlines are already canceling more than 1,000 flights for today. Chicago's O'Hare with the most cancellations overnight, followed by Denver. Tired, stressed, hungry. Just hopeless, honestly. There's snow in Kansas City waiting for us, so we are a little bit nervous about getting there. The delays and cancellations only adding to the chaos at airports packed with holiday travelers. And in California, Allegiant Airlines is trying to reunite 44 passengers with their bags after the airline lost all of them. Andrea Fujii, ABC News, New York. Back here at home, we want to remind you about our Red Kettle campaign for the Salvation Army. You helped us reach our goal of $2,000 to help families in need this holiday season. We want to say thank you for your donations. And there's still time to give more. Just scan this QR code on your screen and it will take you to our donation page. Donations are being accepted until midnight on Christmas Eve, which is this Saturday. A big announcement by the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame as the organization revealed its list of candidates for the class of 2023. It includes first-time nominees Greg Popovich and four-time NBA champ Tony Parker and former Spur Pal Gasol. Greg Popovich, a five-time NBA champ and is still a current head coach of the Spurs, is eligible. That's because, according to the Hall of Fame's own rules, if he has coached for 25 years at the high school, college, or pro level, then he can be inducted. Pop has done just that with the Spurs alone as their head coach. Former Spurs assistant Be Becky Hammond is back on the list of candidates as she as a player after she had been inducted in the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame. We just saw Manu Ginobili inducted this past September in Springfield. The finals will be announced February 17th, their NBA All-Star Weekend. And the class of 2023 will be announced Saturday, April 1st during the NCAA Final Four in Houston. Our Spurs are back in action tonight. They've got a road matchup with the New Orleans Pelicans. Spurs are coming off a big win over the Houston Rockets, so they'll try to keep that momentum going. Spurs Pelicans tip off at 7 o'clock tonight at Smoothie King Center. Go Spurs, go. Let's go. Time now, 640, 48 degrees outside. Still to come on GMSA, have you been thinking about a good way to ask your boss for a raise? What to do and more importantly, what not to do? Coming up next. Welcome back. Just about everyone was hit hard by the recent inflation costs, and it left many employees trying to figure out how to ask their bosses for more money. It's something a lot of people don't enjoy doing because it can get pretty uncomfortable, but it doesn't have to be. Nancy Alvarez has some tips for what to do and what not to do when asking for a raise. Do you deserve a raise? Everyone deserves a raise. Everyone deserves a raise. <laughs> yes, why not? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> yeah, of course. Everyone deserves a raise. <laughs> Research shows about 70% of employees who ask for a raise receive one, and 39% get the money they ask for. You want to ask for a raise after a win. So if, let's say, you just had a stellar job performance review, um, that would be a great time. Also, research the amount you're asking for. Resources like Glassdoor, Payscale, or your HR department can help you determine your market rate. Do write down your accomplishments and how your scope of your work has changed or increased, but don't compare your salary to that of others in your company. The most important thing to consider when asking for a raise is it really has to be about you. So it has to be about what you are bringing to the table. Also, ask in private and in person. 
practice what you're going to say beforehand, but don't make threats or ultimatums. Well, I just got a job offer and they're offering me X amount and what can you do for me? That can be a real turn off for employers. With the do's and don'ts of asking for a raise, I'm Nancy Alvarez reporting. And we want to turn to a traffic alert happening on the west side right now. Take a look. This is southbound loop 410 at Marbach. We've been seeing these flashing lights for several hours, bumper to bumper traffic. So now we're seeing both northbound and southbound lanes closed. That's right. Well, we can tell you there's some sort of incident there in police activity. Uh, the highway remains closed. It has been like this for hours, and we anticipate it will continue to be for many, many hours. So if you can't avoid 410 over uh, Marbach, Ingram, Highway 90 area, if at all possible. Also reports of uh, some debris 281 North at Jones Maltzberger. Justin is back now with a look at our forecast. Well, that is a nightmare there on, on 410, but if you're traveling across the state, today is not going to be bad, but if you're driving north, you're going to be facing that, that front. You're going to get some gusty winds. So that'll be probably the biggest issue on our interstates across Texas today. Our gusts up to 40 miles per hour. If you're heading north to Dallas, it'll be well, in the 40s uh, in the afternoon, temperatures get much, much colder than that uh, by the evening. Houston front holds off until tonight. They're foggy and windy. Brownsville, that front doesn't come through until much later tonight into tomorrow morning. So they're in the 70s there. Corpus Christi, same story. The front holds off a little while. El Paso, um, similar story there too, 65 and sunny. But anywhere across North Texas, it's going to get very, very cold. And those numbers tomorrow, all those numbers there you see on the map will be uh, 20, 30 degrees colder as this front comes through. Right now, we've got 48 degrees at the airport. Cloudy skies, southwest really winds at about 5. And here are the temperatures to our north. It is still negative 1 in Amarillo. 25, the feels like number with the wind chill. Lubbock has a wind chill of negative 12. Wichita Falls has a wind chill of negative 4. Denver has a wind chill of negative 30. This cold air is some of the coldest we've seen in a while and it is uh, plunging south and it will be here just after lunch. The front is now making its way through Abilene and Midland as we speak. It's a little ahead of schedule, so you can plan on about noontime to one, I'd say, for this front to be here in San Antonio. And we'll time it out for you here. This is at 10 a.m. It's starting to move into the hill country. We're starting to see temperatures fall there. Then by, say, 1 p.m., that's where it's on our doorstep here in San Antonio. Yes, we may briefly get into the 60s, but that does not last long at all. And uh, very quickly, we'll be falling into the 40s and 30s. By 6 p.m., 30 degrees. We're below freezing at this point. 25 Kerrville, 24 in Fredericksburg. And then by 10 p.m., down to 25. Teens already showing up. And by tomorrow morning, we're down to 18. On top of all of this, so this cold air, we've got these really strong winds out of the north. And that's going to create some pretty serious wind chills. This is the forecast wind gusts uh, expected around 6 p.m. And we're gusting to 36 here in San Antonio uh, by 11 p.m. And I think this is probably when we, when we peak uh, as far as the wind is concerned, gusts 40 to 45. That's the kind of wind that will blow away your Christmas decorations. It'll blow away any of the tarps you have over your plants. You got to make sure everything is good and secured with these kind of winds. And then as we get into uh, tomorrow morning, still some strong winds. So our wind chill is going to be brutal, but the winds do finally calm down as we get towards midday Friday. So here's a look at the temperatures and wind chill put together. And by 5 p.m. tonight here in San Antonio, Wind chill of 18, temperature at 32. 28 at 7 o'clock, wind chill of 14. We've got wind chills in the single digits as early as 10 p.m. tonight. And by tomorrow morning, that wind chill could be as low as 3. If the wind chill is 3 here in San Antonio, you can bet it will be below zero in parts of the hill country. Now's the time to take preps. We've been talking about it all week. Exposed pipes, pets, plants, people, all those things. Now is the time because this cold is going to be here for Two or three days, again, not like February 2021, but we still have to be careful here with these temperatures the way they are. 18 Saturday morning, 40, cold start. Santa will feel right at home Christmas morning with temperatures starting off at 22. Extended forecast, 35 Friday. We showed you the weekend, 58 Monday. It does warm up next week. It'll be much warmer, in fact. And by the way, we're going to be live today 
You can scan that QR code there on your screen. As the front comes through, meteorologist Mia Montgomery, meteorologist Adam Kasky will be here to walk you through the timing of that front and the effects that we're feeling as the front comes through. If you want to tune in a little bit later today, we're doing that at 1.30, guys. That just in a shave. Are you going to shave between now and then? or? Uh, uh, no. Okay. <laughs> no, I didn't know. Not with the cold. I know. That's no, what I, know. I was going to say. It was, you were smart in keeping it, Justin. <laughs> yeah. All right, 650, 48 degrees. Tomorrow on GMSA, it is the season of giving, and finding the perfect gift for your friends and family can be fun, but it turns out it could also be good for your health. We'll explain tomorrow on GMSA. Outside with live cam. And again, if you don't have those faucet covers on, you still have some time in the next few hours to get that done. As we head to break, more of how some of us here at KSAT enjoy the holidays. fortunate to be able to spend my Christmases with both my maternal and my paternal grandparents. And so my mom's parents, they live up in Iowa. And so every Christmas there was at least some snow on the ground. And so we were able to go sledding and it was just a blast. So that's what our tradition was with them. And then for my dad's parents, my Sue mama and my daddy doc, what we would do is instead of having stockings, we would have nicely knit homemade knit stockings, but we wouldn't stuff them. Instead, we would have these giant uh, plastic containers, like moving containers, and every individual would have one of those giant containers and that was your stocking. I wanna wish you a very Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the massive holiday weather emergency and travel chaos. Our team is tracking the blizzard conditions and bitter cold temperatures that are wreaking havoc on Christmas plans. Hundreds of flights already canceled. We have the latest. And the American woman just released from a Russian prison after nearly a year returning to the U.S. on the same day as Brittany Griner, sharing her harrowing story of abuse in her first national TV interview. Those stories and much more coming up right here on GMA. Okay, one last check on traffic here. We've been focusing on 410 at Marbach. At least that's where the camera is, but really the issue is at 410 and Highway 90. 410 closed both in the southbound and northbound direction, uh, and that is causing major, major backups. You can see it's almost a parking lot there. I believe this is 410 southbound that we're looking at. So you'll want to avoid this area if at all possible. That has been the case through uh, much of uh, this morning. Uh, meantime, forecast. That front is scheduled to hit just afternoon. We may briefly get up to 60, but after that, it just falls off so very quickly. We're near freezing by 5 p.m. tonight. Wind chills will already be in the teens at that point, and we've got bitter cold mornings. 18 Friday morning, 18 Saturday morning, 22 Christmas morning. Wow. All right. Thank you, Justin. Thanks for watching, everybody. Good Morning America is next.